In a landmark ruling, the Supreme Court of Nigeria has declared that local government chairmen and councillors are entitled to a four-year tenure, ending years of uncertainty and illegal terminations. The judgment, delivered by Justice Mohammed Garba and six others on May 11, 2024, reaffirmed the constitutional powers and independence of local government councils, which are the third chair of government in the Federation. The ruling was a response to various illegal actions by some states which had deprived the local government councils of their statutory functions and also truncated their tenure. Justice Garba condemned this situation as one chair of government in humanity to another chair of government. Uh, the judgment also emphasized the importance of upholding the mandate of the electorate and respecting the constitutional responsibilities of the legislative and the judiciary. The ruling has significant implications for local governance in Nigeria as local government chairmen and uh, councillors can now focus on delivering their mandates without fear of illegal termination. The electorates can also hold them accountable for their actions, knowing that they have a full term to deliver on their promises. The judgment is seen as a major victory for democracy and the rule of law in Nigeria. Well, joining us in the studio this morning is Comrade Ayodili uh, Adewali, the immediate past executive chairman of uh, Amu Ward of Inlika Government Area, Lagos State. Good morning, and thank you for joining us. Good morning, and thank you for having me. I mean, we had this uh, conversation the last time on, uh, you know, uh, the prospect of having uh, an autonomous local government uh, in Nigeria. And you also spoke to us about uh, how this has been going on in Lagos State. And to an extent, we will say, you know, Lagos has been at the fore of uh, this conversation and adhering to most of these rules. But we also know that the Supreme Court is, you know, uh, not just a court of jurisdiction, but also a court of policy. And so this, in a way, becomes a law. Is it really about, you know, the time that is allocated to the local government chairman or how well they utilize this time? Well, it's about time. Mm. It's about time because longevity in any administration, especially when you are rebuilding a society, is very important. Uh, take, for example, uh, in Chicago, for instance, there was a time that uh, the place was burned down. And uh, in the course of rebuilding the place, you know, some... Helmsmen in that uh, particular environment came on board, especially at the local government there. And I think the man served for about 34 years, you understand. He was re-elected, re-elected, and they had to build their society. And uh, longevity also helped to strengthen institutions, right? And especially when you are trying to impact values to coming generations. So it takes a while for you to deepen uh, uh, the ideology of, uh, of, of having good governance within the stream. Mm -hmm. But longevity, again, if it's not properly watched and tailored, you know, can also create an imbalance, especially when it's corrupted. So you, it, 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 it is vice versa. But I applaud the Supreme Court to have taken this uh, stand and given the opportunity for local government to compete with other structures of government, you know, state and federal. And... Uh, that competition will also help to improve growth and dissipate good governance. Mm. And, you know, on uh, the front page of uh, the punch this morning, it says that the federal government uh, uh, to reach a three-month agreement on local government allocations. And uh, the government is worried to an extent about the 1990 era when local governments could not pay teachers and uh, workers salaries. But it's been a while since this judgment, although we're just getting uh, the certified uh, true copy. With the posture of the governors and even the local government chairman, would you say we are going in the right path? Yes, we are. We are. We are. Because um, the local government helmsmen are voted by the people. But the lacuna has always been in the Nigerian constitution, which has always been contested, mm -hmm. right? That it's a document that was put together by the military. It was a hush hush document and, and all of that. If that document was allowed, you know, to have a people participation, I can assure you that the local government would have had that four years before now, right? And I must commend the Lagos state government because about eight years ago, the House of uh, Assembly in Lagos, which again, the Constitution gives rights to state assemblies to create laws and guidelines for, for local government. Uh, they have embedded it, changed that law 
taking it from three to four years. So in Lagos State, they've been enjoying four years of mm -hmm. tenure, right? So for the Supreme Court to have done what they did, so it means that all local governments in Nigeria, the 774, have the opportunity to now, you know, uh, serve for that number of years. And they do not have any excuse not to perform because of shortness of time. Is there, has there been, ever been shortness of time when it comes to local government administration? And um, also, there's been this question about um, the survival of the local government, saying that it has been under or they have been subservient to the state government for quite a long time. Do you think that what has been happening in the past might still happen, even with this new law? I do not agree when you say <clears throat> they are subservient to, to state government. Okay. It depends on the zeal and the program that you, bring in, that you bring on board. If you elect somebody that is not uh, full of zeal for development, especially to his constituency, mm -hmm. then whatever that is put before that person, they will always carry on with the excuse that they are subservient to an individual. Okay. But if you have programs, right, uh, if you can create something out of nothing, I do agree that in some states, the state governors have held on mm -hmm. to their funds, which again has limited the performance of the local government chairman. Let's take that as a hurdle. Even if your, your, your allocation is held on to, right, you don't give in. If you come from an enclave that is predominantly agricultural, you have that potential. If I was there, what I would do is look for partners. Yes, I have this problem on ground, whereby the fund, which is not even enough in any case, is held by one man. I will go on PPP, go on agriculture, right? Provide food for my people, export it, sell it, and gain revenue, right? Because the local government also have the power to generate revenue. Okay, so how did you, you were a local government chairman from October 2008. Yes. How did you generate revenue from your own local government at the time? Well, often I don't like saying this, but for the purpose of study and for people to understand that you can create something from nothing, I will say this. In October 30, 2008, when I came in, the first thing I did was to change the signature in the account, right? And in the course of that, I saw that the revenue that came in for that month was 30,000 Naira. For the month? For that month was 30,000 Naira. So what I did was to ask questions, what had happened. And I saw the, the loopholes, so we started blocking it. Then we got a consultant for revenue, which is Alpha Beta, right? They came in, we started tracking the revenue points. And when I was leaving, I left a revenue of over 23 million naira per month. Mm. You can fact check. You can go to Alpha Beta, you can print out the, chair, the, the statement and, and show you all of the things. Right? And I also had to improve on the training of the revenue officers. Right? In some places, I had to buy bikes for them because there's no point in me buying buses whereby you are going to collect revenue within the wards. So I bought sport bikes, kitted them up, and I improved on their, their wages too. We didn't have enough revenue officer, so I had non-pensionable workers right? and took a lot of them to the revenue points and also gave them incentives. If you can generate this much, whatever excess you have becomes a reward. So everybody was out there, you know, trying to generate revenue, which was not even to our full-fledged potential mm -hmm. because our cash cow was the International Trade Fair, right? Yes. And the people there wanted to collect revenue on behalf of the local government. We said, no, according to the guideline, you must have a revenue consultant or a revenue company that the local government can work with, right? So... At the cost of agreeing that agreement, they allowed us, they gave us an office. We're about going in was when my time expired because it took a very long time for negotiation. And we do not also have that, um, that force and we didn't want to go to court. So it's about persuasion and all of that. Perhaps if you had gotten uh, just one year of if just yeah. pulling that common They have come in, then our revenue could have gone as high as 40 million per month mm -hmm. from 23 million. All right. So I, I'm concerned about how this ruling will really affect state steel running caretaker committees. Uh, let's take uh, River State, for example, where, uh, you know, 
uh, the local government chairman had to leave because their tenure had expired. But then uh, they are running caretaker committees, which are actually very illegal uh, at the moment, although there is an election uh, coming up as we got to that. The local government chairman that were you know, asked to, to leave because their tenure ended up saying that now that this ruling is out, they still have one more year. So what's your reaction to that? Well, the Supreme Court ab initio have um, explained, I'll use the word explained, and simplified the provision of the Nigerian constitution. Well, like I said, there's a gap. And the gap is that the Constitution of Nigeria reserved the right to state government to create local government and create laws. And that is why I believe the president of Nigeria, President Tunubu, have also sponsored a bill to the National Assembly that will take care of that, of that matter. And it was on this show you also asked that if that bill is going to run the full fledged and you know, be accepted. And I said, well, the president has the political will among the governors. And when you look at the number of APC governors that you have now, I can bet on it that that bill will be passed and definitely will be signed to law. So it's a question of time. So that bill has taken care of all of those things. So the next thing to be done, if you take it, that provision away from the state, you now reserve it you know, in a central arrangement, then you must have a central arrangement that will oversee the elections of local governments. So when you have that, people have more confidence to come in and say, oh, it won't go the normal way that people would have thought that if you go through anything, you can definitely assure the outcome of that elections. So it means you have more heads coming on board. A situation whereby you, yourself, professors, mm -hmm. you know, even skilled people without any, I mean, very strong literary uh, qualification can come and contest. The barometer will now be that. You must have value in your constituency. Taking part in communal activities and all of that will ensure your popularity among your people and trust. So when you're, pop when you're popular among your people and they trust you and you have always been with them, definitely they will elect you either as chairman, councillor, or, or whatnot. So in electing, okay, for, for this um, ruling now, does it give political will to the local government chairman? First of course, of course. He, he gives that assurance now that they have four years to perform. They're giving you the biro and they're giving you the paper to write your history, right? If you don't do well, your people won't vote for you. Okay, Nigeria so is not in the midday, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean in the prehistoric era anymore. A lot of people can see what is happening. And we have seen what happened at the last elections, whereby people voted in accordance to their conscience. And that was why you saw the pattern in which the vote had gone. So in 2027, you are going to see more improved pattern. It will be on the basis of the person, not on the basis of some level of hierarchy. Okay, so with this ruling, are we to wait in 2027? No, it no, it is a journey. Okay, so for all of these states now, there are a lot of people who have the mindset that, um, for instance, roads in uh, inner roads are supposed to be done by local by the state governments. They still have that mindset. What are the 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 roles of the local government? What are they supposed to do in different communities apart from collecting revenue? You see, things are changing, and it's changing very fast. Okay. Now, if you look at the pattern of dissemination of information by the federal government now, especially as it concerns finances, mm -hmm. monthly finances, they are now coming up with not just numbers, they are giving you projections and the, 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 the responsibility of these structures of government, right? So that everybody don't put too much energy on the central government. That look at the funds that state government are getting, look at the funds that local government are getting and their responsibility. So by the time the people are more conscious of that fact, they will hold their local government and their state government to account. And by doing such, the people sitting on the seat of power also know that they have to maintain power and be consistent in what they are doing. So they have no other choice than to be responsible to their people. Then the ball is also thrown to your own table, the media, and of course the civil society, to continue to follow on with this narrative that X amount of money have been given to 
774 local government, let us ask them, what have you done with these funds? But in asking them, you must also ask them, what are your budgets, the components of your budget for that year? So it means local So you track the funds to, to have, the budget. You to have town hall meetings. Definitely. You must have quarterly town hall meetings. You must have that. Mm. All right. You know, so, so let's, uh, you know, look at it on a larger scale. Um, this over-reliance on the, the center. Mm. Uh, if you watched uh, the president's speech, where, which was uh, quite instructive in a way where he, you know, acknowledged responsibility for some of the policies he made, uh, but also, you know, understood that at the bulk of the work, he's on a stable. But by taking that responsibility, I think to an extent he exposed some state governors, especially who have decided not, you know, to take responsibility. I'm talking about uh, uh, increasing internally generated revenue. And that's why there are recent calls, you know, for uh, the constitution change and all, because some persons would argue that uh, as against true federalism, where state should be sending to the central, the states themselves are receiving from the central. Perhaps this ruling will help us understand how well we can, you know, generate internally generated revenue at a state level, at local government level. <laughs> Well, you are, you are very right in what you have said. I will liken it to a football match, right, for people to understand better. No matter how good a player is, if you like, go and wake up a Maradona from the grave to come and play in the match. If those other players don't team play, those there's no players. how you can win that match, right? No matter how good the central government is, they have, they have jurisdiction. You cannot cross those jurisdictions. Even when you cross it, it amounts to wastage of resources. Because what the Constitution has given you the responsibility to, to undertake, right? You'll be eloping out of that, and you will not be able to concentrate well. So everybody must do what the provisions have you know, as applied, you understand, in order to deepen the development but are, are we people. not also you know training the local governments now by also you know learning to receive from the center for many years from now uh, they will also have to just you know sit back when, when and I, have to just when i mention when center. i mention performance and jurisdiction mm -hmm. i've only said it in a, an ideological concept okay. right to make it very simplistic for you the local government have responsibility to generate funds mm -hmm. in fact that is a core responsibility I was listening to a presentation in social, on social media today, and I was looking at the numbers that they were dishing out that state government collected in the month of July from the federal. And I looked at the Lagos state allocation, for instance, from the federal. The amount of money that came in was not even up to 30 billion. 30 billion alone cannot take care of Lagos state for a month if the Lagos state don't, government don't go out, all out to generate funds. It means that the level of development we have in Lagos will be in comatose. Now, look at a state like Delta, for instance. They don't have the number of population that we have in Lagos. In fact, Lagos population should be four times bigger or five times bigger than that of Delta. But in terms of allocation, Delta is getting about, uh, I think, about three times more compared to Lagos. Now, you now ask, what have they been able to do with the funds? So, the major uh, bane of development is for each stratum of government, each structure of government to generate funds to the best of their ability. Whatever that comes from the collective fund that is shared from the center is only a complement. If you don't improve on your, on your immediate constituency, there's no how you can move very fast. So talking about generating funds, how can they generate funds? To generate funds first, you must block leakages. Okay. Right? If you don't block leakages, you cannot generate funds. Because these funds go to private pockets, and some of them are under, under tapped. The second is to be able to peg the source of funds, where these funds will come from. Everything cannot just be on heavy taxation, right? Source of funds can come from production. Mm -hmm. Even if you don't have the capacity to produce, there are some partners that are looking for likable partners that they can use their, uh, their, 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 their space to create something, either industry, 
either agriculture, either tech, or what have you. So you must be creative. You must think out of the box. The third is to train your people, right? For instance, if you invest so much in education, that investment in education will reduce your spendings in security. We reduce your spendings on the environment. We reduce your spendings on health. Mm. Because if you get community health right, you spend less, you understand, in treatment of, of diseases and all of that. If you invest massively in, 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 in structuring your environment, it means that you are going to have people in the creative industry to come and use your environment to create things that will bring in revenue. So education is very, very important in order to structure your society and make your people produce effectively. Okay, so my, my also, how, did, how do local government partner with different um, individuals, like you mentioned PP, um, public-private partnership when you were there, how can they partner with private individuals, private firms in different localities to create all of these structures? At times, you don't have to go out of your locality. Because many of the things that you need are in, yeah. within the society. I take, for instance, health. When I came in, I met one doctor. When I was leaving, I left 46 doctors that we were paying for, right? Mm -hmm. The first institution I met with was the NYSC. They have this in their pool in abundance. So I went to discuss with them. And they said, look, we have limited numbers of doctors. But for each doctor we will give you, will give you other discipline. So at some point, NYC was having three orientation in a year. Amu World of him was getting between 220 to 265 NYC core members. Mm. And I was paying my doctor at the Riverine community 100,000 Naira at, the time. at that time. Upland, I was paying 70,000 Naira because I needed more doctors. Then I went to meet with the retirees in our local government, we are privileged enough to have retirees that have come in from Germany, from the US, and what have you. So I discussed with them. I could not pay uh, the uh, allowances, but I paid them, I think I started paying 150,000 Naira. Then we took it to 170,000, as had then. Now, I also benchmarked the number of people that are meeting these doctors. For each of them, in a day, they see nothing less than 70 to 120 persons people a day. So I was getting value for my money. Mm -hmm. Then I also met a guy called, uh, I think Debo is his name, he owned Profis Pharmaceutical. He's a Rhetorian. So I discussed with Debo that, look, I want to give free drugs to people. You'd be amazed that people that have diabetes and hypertension now, for their drugs per month, they pay about 110,000 Naira mm -hmm. to take care of diabetes and hypertension, if they ever have it, <laughs> right? No, I discussed with Debo and said, look, I want to vote in one million Naira per month. And he said, OK, what about the facility? I said, we don't have. He said, OK, I will build the facility. And I will hand it over to the local government in the next five years. It becomes our structure, mm -hmm. right? Now, he brought in the facility. He brought in the drugs. I was paying one million naira per month. At a point, it went to two million naira per month. So we're giving free drugs to people within the age of zero to 16, and 60 and above. Okay. And the differential, we were reducing the cost of drugs by 10%. Then I met L Lab, L Laboratory, because you can't diagnose without, I mean, you can't see the doctor without diagnostic. So L Lab came, brought his equipment, we gave him a space, right? And we brought in Sun Lab, and they reduced their own cost by 10%. So when you see the doctor, All right. you go to the lab for diagnostic, mm -hmm. come back to the doctor, then you go to collect free drugs. And we're giving free health, I mean, free delivery. Right? Anybody that comes to deliver a baby at no cost. So in all, and we're it, also giving delivery kits. So in all of this, it, it, it depends on who the people vote into power. Thank you. It depends on, and we deliver 3,000 babies without any debt. All right. No, no, uh, we, Mr. Had one debt. we had one debt all right. out of the 3,000 babies. All right, Mr. Adewale. You know, for some of these issues that you have mentioned, um, to an extent, uh, some persons watching will ask, you know, how is this really going to affect me? Most times they look at the government policies and ask that, you know, some inherent factors, some environmental factors that we see today, uh, bureaucracy that we see in the civil service, you know, corruption, some factors, you know, you are saying this because you can speak for yourself. You cannot speak for the other person. How are we sure that these factors will not continue, you know, to play and, you know, 
limit what the federal government is doing as regards autonomy uh, for the local government? The factor will always be there. When I came in, it was not easy, right? I faced stiff opposition, very stiff opposition, especially from the bureaucrats. But again, I told them that, look, for instance, in revenue, if I'm able to generate much, I'll give you incentives. You understand? So that meant that apart from giving staff allowances and all of that, when it came to festivity, I was giving out, you know, lajis mm. and all. But again, we were training them very effectively, effective training. And we were using carrot and stick. If you do well, you problem. get incentive. If you don't do well, we query you. Okay. And the worst thing any bureaucrat wants is a query letter in their file. Mm. And I was working from 8 a.m. to 3 a.m. every day. It was a sacrifice. Mm right, for six years, right? So, and we were also having lots of town hall meetings. So the people were part of it. The bureaucrats, the civil servants were part of it. We were, saw ourselves as one family. Apart from those uh, town hall meetings, did you also meet, you know, with other local government chairmen? Of course, we had Conference 57, we share ideas. Mm. And we had a program called Conf Access 57. So all local government chairmen then, 57 of us, were competing in infrastructure and what have you. In fact, we did roads. Yeah. At a point, I had to partner with Lagos State Direct Labor. You understand? In order to bring down the cost of road construction. At some point, I saw that using asphalt alone was a big problem because asphalt and water are not friends. So you needed to understand the geography, the topology, and your soil nature. So I cascaded from asphalt to interlocking stone. And in transportation also, right? It was a very good avenue for us to empower our people. So this uh, 2K2K 2K you see on the Lagos Street now, those shuttle buses, <laughs> we started it in Amumu Odofi with four Korokwe. We started with four buses in Amumu. Now it's all over the place, right? Then I also partnered with, last me, Lagos Street Microfinance Institution and Kauri Microfinance. Mm -hmm. And we're giving loans to people at 1.5% of interest with our collateral. The only collateralization is a letter from your community leader or your religious leader that we can, and we can verge for this man that he lives here okay. because we need to track your address. Mm -hmm. Then we partner with Fadama to produce crops, some light crops that we so, eat within the community. You know, this is a whole lot of you know, development just within the three-year frame. And that's no, why I, I spent six years. Okay, and that's, years what, and that's why I was asking the question if it was really about time. Some persons will have that no, it's, it's, it's about amount time. of time yeah, it's about and time. will Do not, not put much. it to good use. Let's also look at uh, the other side. But then there is this issue of you know, trust deficits. Uh, we had the protest a few days ago mm. and perhaps some of those reasons uh, that they were, you know, Putting or some of those blames they were putting on the center were really issues that you know should have been handled by the states, uh, should have also be handled by the local government. What's really the business of the federal government in, in health when the state government can handle uh, health for that environment? Even our little you know primary health primary health centers. So you know how do we regain that trust? Uh, the local government chairman themselves, apart from uh, the town hall meetings, what else can they do? You know, to, you know, people also want to, you know, feel comfortable uh, within the local government. You see, trust is an affirmation of activity, mm. conversation. I would advise the federal and the state government to create an avenue for people to engage them in discussion. Okay. Right? For state government, local government, they can create a quarterly avenue whereby they meet people and also plug it in to social media and virtual and all what not. Mm. Likewise for the federal. The more you tell or speak to your people, they ask questions, you answer those questions. All right. Some of those questions can be answered rightly. Some of them can also be answered that it's work in progress. Mm -hmm. So the more of information, I mean flow of information that is not damned, then it becomes a bit difficult for manipulators to so start manipulating right, uh, the stream of information. All right, you know, so the, the, the local government chairman and also the councillors have uh, four years yeah. to yeah. prove themselves. Yeah. And for those who are re-elected, I guess that will be... But my advice will also be going forward, that we don't limit the tenure mm. of local government to two. If you have very good people that are performing very well, all right. Leave it to the electoral process. Because of our time, you know, I think for people we will to continue to vote them in or vote them out. <laughs> All, right. All right. Thank you very much for that. Uh, Comrade Ayodele Adewali is uh, the immediate uh, past 
Executive Chairman of uh, Amu Ward of the local government area, Lagos State, 